Hey, what's up guys? It's Fish here and welcome back to some more Warhammer Total War. Today we are in a glorious custom map in Vermintide. So if you guys have played the game Vermintide, you will remember this in from the game itself. And I think the modder has done an amazing job at creating this really awesome atmosphere. He's also got like some really cool custom, I guess, banners in, which I don't understand how he managed to get these in because in Warhammer, you basically can't import any custom assets into the game itself so the fact that he's actually got these like these ones right here are just really really impressive i guess he's gone ahead and taken like parts from from different things and just kind of all put them together but even still that's just absolutely awesome so we'll quickly take a look at the map because i think it's definitely worth it and then we'll kind of get into the battle right here we have a 3v3 it's me pixelated apollo and indie pride up against three people from the community and it actually turned out to be a pretty interesting battle i think we're playing as orcs bretonia and apollo is playing as the beastman and we're fighting against the empire bretonia and no, and the vampire counts yes so let's go ahead and take a look at the map itself so we can see in the distance, we can see all the, the tables and the drunken uh, beer bottles and stuff like that. We also have a assortment of weapons and shields over on this left-hand side. We then go across the bar itself. We can see that we have a nice little dwarven shield and axe embedded into the uh, bar, bar. And then we also have a really nice looking greatsword and a gun over here as well. So all the weapons that you guys actually see in Vermintide. And uh, then as we make our way over as well, you actually have some really cool looking assets outside of the map itself as well with like a uh, coach right there outside there with all these windows being barred then obviously you have the upstairs up there and there's just like loads of really nice little unique details in this map which the modder has kind of gone to an extent uh, uh to a pretty extent uh, high level to actually make happen as well as that there's actually a ship over on this left hand side where is it is it on the left hand oh yeah you also have all these little models as well yeah, you have all these like figurines like for like, as if they were playing with tabletop, which again just looks awesome. I love this so much. That's really, really cool. I dig that a lot. But yeah, there's actually, if I find it on the map, I think it's over on this left-hand side. Yeah, there's actually this ship and it actually shoots out projectiles as well. So if you capture the, the capture point right here, you can use the ship to actually hit the enemy, which was really, really cool. So we'll start the battle quickly and we'll look over the, the troops. There's actually a little bit of an engagement going on as these Pegasus Knights just get absolutely smashed by our forces. So as I said, I'm playing as the Yorks. Indy Pride is playing as Bretonia and we also have Apollo playing as the K. I mean, as uh, the Beastman. So Chaos, uh, Apollo's forces are mainly going to be made up of these Chaos Spawn along with a whole bunch of these Ungor Raiders and these Ungor Herd, or these Gore Herds, sorry. Uh, they're going to kind of pretty much be his entire force. He does also have some Best of Gores as well. But yeah, he kind of went for a more of a cheap force. Me, on the other hand, well, I've kind of, kind of gone for the exact same as well. I have a pretty big line of Orc Boys. I think I have around about four Orc Big Uns and then the rest are just Black Orcs. And I do have some Trolls and a Giant as well with Grimgore Lee leading up the center. There's also a spawn point over here. Uh, Indy Pride is going to go heavy on the cavalry, and he's going to bring barely any infantry, I believe. He just wants to use the, the heavy knights of Bretonia and kind of use me and Apollo as a meat shield. You can see the rest of my forces already up here getting ready to engage, so we will slow him, slow him away not to miss any of the action. So as you can see, more of my Black Orcs, they also have some catapults and stuff like that. Looking at the enemy forces, you can see that they have a main line of Skeleton Warriors. They also have a uh, Manfred on a Zombie Dragon and also some other flies over there. We also have some more Grave Guards, some Crypt Horrors, and then we're going to have some Crypt Ghouls leading up the back ranks with some more Skeleton Warriors and then finally some Calm Race as well. The other line of the infantry for the skeleton for the vampire counts is going to be made up of more zombies. Grave guard. We actually do have a necromancer and the uh, the mortis engine as well, along with some of these direwolves. And also, is that a terror geist this time? I believe that is a terror geist. Yeah, we also have a terror geist. Then finally, the Bretonian army on this side is going to be holding down this left passage with some units of uh, men at arms, and they're going to be supported by some spear, uh, spear men at arms, and some archers. So this is a pretty strong force over on this left-hand side. Pretty much the entirety of the Bretonian forces is on that left side, almost leading these two vampire count armies by themselves. 
And you can see the battle is starting to, to shape up right here. I'm pushing up my Black Orcs because this is kind of where the strength of my force lays. Because I knew Apollo and I knew that Indy Pride were going to go heavy on the center. You can already see Apollo and the minimap going hard on that left flank. So I thought if I just put all my, my quantity troops there and put quality over on this left side, that they'll be more than enough to push these guys back. I also have some Goblin Archers as well helping me out. But these skeleton warriors shouldn't be too much of uh, too trouble, too much trouble for my men to deal with. However, these crypt or these crypt horrors might be a little bit of an issue. But I'm hoping my black orcs will be able to hold firm. I have my cat a catapult thrower shooting away lots and lots of rocks, as many as they can. And again, just the feel of this map just really does bring the essence of Total War into it. It, it feels like we are playing you know, on the tabletop. You can just see the characters from, from Vermintide just playing right now as we get a pretty brutal missile strike coming in. But my Night Goblins will hopefully be starting to pick away at the, the at Manfred on his terror, on his Zombie Dragon and the rest of his Vargeist as well. That's why I really need them to pin down as best I can. Because uh, this is where gonna be the main fighting is going to start off. The, the Vargeist are going to come down. Indy Pride is going to save my Archers by throwing in his Pegasus Warriors, getting a really nice charge. And with the support of my archers, we've already managed to banish one unit of Vargeist. I'm also sending back some of my Orc Biggins, because I believe these guys are anti-large as well. So that's going to really help us out. The rest of the forces are still fighting. We do actually have the Curse of Years on these guys, reducing their melee attack and making them extremely slow, which is never too good when they're trying to get into combat. Manfred on his zombie dragon is just tearing apart a lot of these soldiers but Apollo has supported our line on this left flank with a gore ball and that's going to be wrecking havoc against these skeleton warriors and then all, uh, we also have my orc biggins as well smashing through the grave guard along with that gore ball the gore ball is just such a sick unit it really is a nice raise dead up there by the uh, necromancer and he's going to be helping out the uh, kind of the flanking forces. However, by the looks of it, my Black Orcs are tearing through these guys. And I'm going to get some Orc Biggins with a perfect charge on the zombies. So with the support of uh, Indy's Pegasus Knights, he's really helped me out. And then he's going to be taking the rest of his forces over to this left-hand side and helping out Apollo as Apollo charges in. Now, this is where Indy Pride can really start to use his cavalry. Because as I said, he mainly just bought cavalry. I think he literally only bought cavalry. And that's going to be helping him out when he does decide side to you know break through these lines you can see that's exactly what he's doing sending the knights trying to get round the back of the vampire lines and if he can start hitting some hammer and anvils through these gaps uh, that's just going to be catastrophic for the vampire counts you can also see i have some units moving up in support i did also try to push up a force on this left hand side because if you can see right now look how many soldiers are currently being stationed here this is like an entire army right here and all i'm doing is spending four units of orc biggins or one unit of orc biggins and three units of orc boys to keep this entire army here whilst the rest of our kind of troops just smash the main center and we can get some nice little close-ups here as well of a those beastmen doing exactly that as we go back to normal speed the vampire counts are going to be supporting with more soldiers uh, trying to buff up the main lines so the cavalry is going to kind of got come in smashing in there the uh the knights errant of these guys knights errant knights of a realm sorry are going to be pushing in and hitting the zombie line i mean this is like a pretty dense battle line right now as we have the beastmen fighting the zombies more Graveguard coming in on this right flank. More Bretonian Knights come flying in with the Grail Knights as well. Grail Knights are going to be doing an amazing charge against the Graveguard right there. The battle line is looking hectic right now. But what an awesome engagement right now. And Indy Pride also has a lot of his troops still sitting back as well. Even though this battle is still kind of going... Uh, going uh, pretty evenly right now. Indy Pride can go ahead and commit a lot of these horses, which is exactly what he's going to be doing, trying to do. I think he's going to hit these center gores and these gore herds, and then he's going to be trying to break through this gap and get around the side of the vampire forces, because if he can do that, he'll be in a great, great situation. If we go back to the left-hand flank, we can see how it is going. It's really just turned into an all-out brawl right now. Indy Pride does have a nice unit of his Grail Knights surrounding Manfred, doing a huge amount of damage to him. So hopefully we can destroy Manfred. Because obviously, as you guys know, uh, the Vampire Counts, once they lose their general, really don't do too well. They kind of definitely struggle. They start to crumble. And they're very, very much morale, uh, they're very much morale dependent. So as long as he can stay alive, I think the Vampire Counts will be doing fine. 
But, you know, if we do manage to kill him, that's going to be great to winning this left flank because I am definitely starting to run out of Black Orcs. And if my Black Orcs fail, then that's just going to be over for this flank because I doubt Indy Pride's cavalry can keep back the oncoming hordes. There's still more and more soldiers coming. You can even start to see that this left flank is starting to break, which is not too good. Luckily, we still have a few good uh, strength units left in the battle. And Manfred has just been absolutely annihilated. I've been focusing down with my Night Goblins and Indy Pride's Grail Knights have just done so much damage that hopefully he is going to go down. I believe all my archers are just focusing him down and there we go. Manfred has been slain on the battlefield which is just huge and you can already see the massive effect it's having on all the weaker infantry units which is not good for the forces of the vampire counts. Then if we go back to the main battle line, we can press K and just go down the battle line quickly, or slowly I should say. We can see the Grail Knights are still fighting hard. Apollo does have some of his more elite soldiers as we have, uh, we, we actually have, uh, who, who is this general? Vlad von Karstein pushing in. Unfortunately, uh, the other general is not here to, to support her love. This has been one of the best battle lines I think I've seen in Total War Warhammer in a long time. It's just very, very dense, very thick, and it is it's awesome. I, I definitely enjoy maps like this where we have a, a really nice long battle line, but it's just, you know, it's just everyone just moves forward and clashes in the center. I think that's really, really cool. And you can just see Indy Pride has managed to maneuver his cavalry around the back. I've managed to maneuver unit of trolls around the back, and we're pretty much looking pretty confident around this left flank. And you can see the Bretonian forces over here even though they're having a bit of a skirmish fight with uh, with Indy Pride, the rest of the forces are still holding that left side, and that's just giving us a huge, huge boost to our kind of our central forces. I'm going to get a beautiful troll charge off on both of these flanks right now, and then Apollo is going to follow up with his center gores, and we are just going to surround the forces in this central point of the vampire counts and just dismember them. We're going to give them no mercy. And we are just going to finish them off. You can see they're completely surrounded. The Grave Guard have nowhere to go right now. And as, as soon as we take down this corpse cart, I think that's actually a Necromancer, right? As soon as we take down the Necromancer, that'll be great. The Pegasus Knights are assaulting the Terror Geist. Things are looking pretty good for us so far. We've managed to capture all three of the Fort Towers, so we should be getting some support from missiles somewhere. I'm not sure if these Fort Towers shoot or what, but they should be supporting us pretty heavily. And you can see on this left flank as well, we are managing to break the enemy, but they, they still just have so many numbers left. Thankfully, Indy Pride has a unit of Questing Knights to support when he does uh, choose to do that. And we also have this Gorble back here. And the archers are still whittling these guys down. I believe my archers are just going to town. I mean, the Black Orcs as well have really been impressive so far this battle. The Black Orcs have definitely shown their worth. And I'm really glad I stuck them on this left flank. Because if I would have left some just Orc big ones or something, they would have broke through his left flank and outflanked our main force ages ago, which obviously would not have been good. So I'm pretty happy that we did manage to, uh, to hold this left flank. And um, that's allowed us really just to destroy the, the center, center points, which you can see is exactly what we are doing. Completely breaking them right here, killing another enemy lord right now. I believe the Bretonian one is the only one left. And we are going to be get, uh, gathering up our forces, getting ready for the final assault. We can see that Indy Pride does have uh, his, uh, his legendary lord over here, the Fate Enchantress. I believe she does also have some pretty nice spells left as well. As we get a Wind Blast and the rest of the cavalry, I believe, is supporting... Uh, her as she runs away from the engagement or maybe not we actually have some grail guardians up against the grail knights some bretonian on bretonian action and the main lines of bretonia are just watching whilst this happens they're forming up a nice little final stand which definitely does look cool in this beautiful in map You can just see the death and destruction that has occurred in our force. The rest of our forces are just making our way over to the final stand. As you can see I've got some trolls left. Apollo has plenty of his gore herds, some orc biggins. And then obviously we have this giant as well who's going to be pushing his way over. And I believe he is pretty much full health as well, which is great news. Yeah, he's literally full health, so that is awesome. We're going to be assembling our forces for the final charge. But I mean, just look at the dead bodies here. There is so many. There's been blood and gore throughout this engagement. This left flank is actually ending up to, to not go in our favor. 
Luckily, I have some archers left, and these night goblins are working overtime in the forest, just trying to destroy these guys. Because, again, their morale is really, really bad on pretty much all these units. So if we can just get these guys to crumble, that would be amazing, because all our forces are, are pretty much elsewhere right now. We have the majority of our army meeting up. We're actually going for a huge earth, uh, an earth blood right here. Uh, that's why we're clumping up all our units. So luckily, there's no foot of gork coming down to punish this. You can just see all our all our units moving in. I think Apollo is bringing in the rest of his units, and we're going to try and get a, a huge Earth blood with the rest of these guys to regenerate as much HP as we can, and then we're going to be pushing on the final stand right there. So you can see the rest of Apollo's infantry is just making its way in, and I think believe it's just about to be cast, and you can see the amount of uh, effect that's going to have on all these units. Or well, I think Indy, yeah, Apollo is just bringing back the rest of his units now before this thing does go down. And it does. It's pretty. It's actually. I mean, it's not disgusting, but it's pretty nice. We get your regeneration and all these units bringing their HP back up, which is, which is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna uh, complain about that. You see Apollo going a little bit too far with his units. I mean, victories are looking pretty good for us as well because I believe on that right flank. Uh, yeah, you can see there you go. The Earth Blood on all of these units replenishing as the extended version as well so so much hp is going to be gained on all of these units which is just going to give us such a good advantage going in i mean the battle is definitely ours already you can see the forces over here did manage just about to break the, the vampire count units so i think they crumbled which was extremely nice for us we're going to be bringing over all these units and now it is just the final stand of the bretonian forces we have a comet of castador coming down thankfully missing our army the last few knights are making their way forward to charge into Apollo's spearmen however they are going to be quickly pushed back and this is going to be the final stand of Bretonia I think the battle was looking very good for us the archer fire is coming out and then we also have the chaos spawn pushing in the knights are going to be the first ones in supporting their peasantry our oh, beautiful comet of Cassador they're going out in the middle of this infantry line for the enemy Bretonian player and the rest of the boys will be following very, very soon. We have more Chaos Spawn coming in, along with my units of Troll Wheels have a giant. And I'm sure Indy Pride will be helping out very soon. We actually have King Leoncore pushing in on his final stand. Trying his best to rally the troops, but I do not think it's going to be enough. He's obviously popping Stand Your Ground and any other buff that he does have at his disposal. But look at that, look how many troops we just have. So many beastmen are still remaining in this battle. And the Bretonian infantry just isn't good enough right now. I imagine the Encore is gonna be struggling with his HP very, very soon. Oh, he's actually at full health right now. So as long as he can stay at full health, maybe the Bretonian infantry stand a chance. The Chaos Spawn are going to be, you know, maybe having a little bit of a rough time here because these men at arms do have anti-large. But again, they're just not, they're just not meant for this kind of long, uh, long engagement. The Bretonian Archers, oh, what a big cycle hit right there. The Bretonian Archers are going to have to be trying to just shoot get off as many volleys as possible. However, as you can see, my giant is just breaking through the lines of Bretonia. Their Archers are being pushed into the battle. The Gore Balls have now turned up. And the Minotaurs. And they are just such, such powerful units of breaking the line and hitting the back infantry. So, so goddamn powerful. Especially now these archers have gone in as well. I believe that a lot of the infantry are just going to be getting surrounded. And they're just going to be broken. Even though King Leoncor is on full health, there's just no hope for him whatsoever. And he's just going to straight up flee. He's barely even fought a battle. And there we go. A pyrrhic victory to me, Indy Pride, and Apollo. And it was a lot of fun to play that battle. Just kind of messing around. Uh, kind of kind of goofing it. Make, playing on a pretty raw, really fun map as well. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. We can see my Black Orcs on that left flank just coming up huge holding them back besides that though no one really did too well i guess my trolls did okay apollo's forces his gore balls doing amazing and his Saigor as well doing pretty decently indy pride's infantry we can see his grail guardians just doing awesome and so do his knights of the realm the enemy forces uh everyone's doing pretty standard no one really stepping up too much the Bretonian forces their archers did good but everyone else just did not do anything 
And then finally, we have the other Vampire Count player. And again, no one really getting that many kills. Like 177 unit on the Grave Guard. But besides that, nothing too impressive. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this Warhammer battle. Make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.